With a large number of varieties of English emerging all around the world, the issue of determining standards for these emerging varieties has often surfaced among world English scholars. Before discussing matters pertaining to determining standards for these outer and expanding circle varieties, let's take a look at what we mean by a standard language. The term standard began to be used for language and literature only in the 18th century. So early until the 18th century, the term was not used for language. The term historically was used for battle flags, um, battle flags generally, and it started to be used for battle flags as well in a battle between England and Scots in uh, North Yorkshire in the 12th century. Then it was called the King's Standard. The term has since been used in the armies to refer to the flags of different regiments and units. So, a standard language now uh, co has come to mean that variety of a language which is considered the norm. By this we mean the variety of the language which provides the rules and principles for the use of the language. And uh, it is mostly used for educational purposes. For example, in schools, colleges, universities, the instruction is imparted in the standard language. The exams are taken in the, in the um, standard language. Books uh, are published in the standard language. And not only textbooks, but books otherwise, books uh, for literature, books in fiction, etc. They're also published in the standard language. So in this way, we can say that a standard language is the yardstick against which all the other varieties are measured or evaluated. So a standard language serves the purpose of criteria against which the other varieties are evaluated. A standard language is always considered a prestige variety. Um, and it, despite being a prestige variety, it is spoken by a small minority of people. Now, why is that? Everybody wants to speak the prestige variety, but uh, the case is that um, it is uh, used by uh, only those people who have power and position. And such people are in a minority in all societies. So it is spoken by a small mini minority of people with power and position and it is only these people who are able to use this language because it is these people who have more access to education and they have more access to let's say um, more reading and writing in terms of reading books etc. Now how does a language or a variety come to be called as a standard variety? So language, languages go through a process of standardization. Sometimes this process standardization just happens, let's say automatically, as the language progresses. And sometimes it goes through a process, uh, a deliberate process is used by which conventional forms of language are established and maintained. The conventional forms, the regional forms, which means the innovation and variation is discouraged and the, the original forms of uh, different linguistic items are preserved through the process of standardization. And this standardization is achieved through codification. Uh, codification can be defined as the methods used to complete the process of standardization. These methods include the creation and use of dictionaries, style and usage guides, traditional grammar, textbooks, etc. These uh, books are taken out, are published to make it easier for people to access the proper rules and principles uh, behind the use of a certain variety or the rules, regulations, etc. which govern the use of a variety which is considered the right variety or the correct variety. So if these um, books are not brought out, people will not know what the rules are. 
um and only those people who use this variety amongst themselves only they would know the rules so codification takes place which makes it easier for people to access these rules and principles behind the use of a uh, standard variety now the term codification was popularized only in the 1970s by a linguist called Einar Hogan um he defined this process as a process that leads to minimal variation in form like we just said that um standardization is done to make sure that um or to discourage uh, variation and innovation codification also helps in achieving this uh, aim it through codification it is made sure that um there is not much variation when everybody will have a style guide or a textbook a grammar textbook to refer to they will make an effort the people who use the language will make an effort to use the um, uh, forms which are prescribed in those textbooks grammar textbooks now what is important for us to note is that languages themselves do not have prestige for example we cannot identify a language as being a more prestigious language another language as a less prestigious language languages acquire their prestige because of the people who use those languages so if people of high prestige use a particular language that language will be considered a prestige variety or a prestige language this um approach explains the prestige which is attached to standard english the prestige and power which is attached to the standard english on a broader scale um english uh, has english is the language of um, england and america and historically uh, both these countries first england and then america had been uh, consider had been powerful nations in the world um during the colonial period england perhaps was the only um or was the most powerful nation in the world and after the world wars america emerged as another powerful nation so these um, the, the other countries the other war torn countries looked towards these countries for help etc they also made more progress in terms of technological development industrial advancement etc and on a smaller scale um these variety the standard variety within uh, england and america within native speaking countries is also used by people of power and prestige so that is why standard english uh, enjoys so much prestige in the world